रघुनाथान्वित तम सजीव साइत सवदूत पिजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्यदेव श्रीराधाकृष्ण पादान सह गना ललिता श्री विशाकान्वित हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीनबंधु जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमोस्तु ते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुदे देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वाचाकलपतरुभ्य कृपा सिंधुव्य पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधार श्रीवास दिगौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण सो सीक द ब्लेसिंग्स ऑफ ऑल द वैष्णवस सो वी आर डिस्कसिंग फ्रॉम द फोर्थ कैंटो ऑफ श्रीमद भागवतम चैप्टर ट्वेंटी टू एंड टाइटल प्रीतु महाराज मीटिंग विद द फोर कुमारस टेक्स्ट ट्वेंटी वन शास्त्रे वीयान्व सुनिश्चि निर्नाम क्षेम से साद्रृमशेषु हेतु असंग आत्मा व्यतिरिक्त आत्मनी दृधारते ब्रह्मणि निर्गुण चय शस्त्रु याने वुनिश्चि निर्नाम क्षेम से साद्रृमशेषु हेतु असंग आत्मा व्यतिरिक्त आत्मनी दृधारते ब्रह्मणि निर्गुण चय शास्ते सुयाने वुनिश्चि निर्नाम क्षेम से सदृग्रृमशेषु हेतु असंग आत्मा व्यतिरिक्त आत्मनी दृदारति ब्रह्मणि निर्गुणे चया word to word meaning shastreshu in the scriptures iyan sorry iyan eva this is only sunischitah positively concluded nirnam of human society shemasya of the ultimate welfare सदृक् सॉरी सदृक् पर्फेक्टली विमृशेशु बाय फुल कॉन्सिडरेशन हेतु कॉज असंग डिटैचमेंट आत्मा व्यातिरिक्ते द बॉडीली कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ लाइफ आत्मनि on to the supreme soul dridha strong ratihi attachment brahmani transcendence nirgune in the supreme who is beyond the material modes cha and ya yeah, which 
Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shla Prabhupada, Shla Prabhupada Ki. Translation, it has been conclusively decided in the scriptures after due consideration that the ultimate goal for the welfare of human society is detachment from the bodily concept of life and increased and steadfast attachment for the Supreme Lord who is transcendental beyond the modes of material nature. So we are discussing the uh, reply given by the four Kumaras. Prithu Maharaj, when he meets the four Kumaras, he is greeting them. And uh, he asks one question about, uh, you know, in this material world, what is the greatest thing? Right. Uh, he says there is no need to ask about your well-being. Right. Um, So this comes in the 16th verse, 15th, 14th verse, yeah, in the 14th verse, he says that, um, no, he says no need to ask for you, he says in the 15th verse that how this, in being in this material world, we can actually achieve the ultimate good, in the 15th verse. How being in this material world, we can actually get shema. What is the real shema? What is the real ultimate good for us? So, in this uh, translation, Shla Prabhupada, very nicely has mentioned, that two things are there. First point is to become detached from the bodily concept of life. And second is to become attached to Krishna. Pravirti and Nivrti. So, this is the theme of the, we have discussed the purport. Um, when I read this verse, I just remembered how, you know, these uh, four Kumaras are saying very firm with full conviction. Shastre su iyan eva sunishchito nirnam. So this is not only for certain uh, people, nirnam, anyone who's a human. Anyone who's a human, the Shastras has given the sunishchit, the conclusion. This conclusion you should take if you're human. Okay, so this, this injection is for every human, not Indians, not Bhardavasis, but all humans. This is the conclusion of the Shastras. What is that sh conclusion of Shastra? Become detached from this body conception. Not become detached from the body. Become detached from the bodily conception and become attached to Krishna. So similarly, the four Kumaras are great elevated. Sampradaya Acharyas. So they are speaking like this. In uh, Mukunda Mala Stotra, in the beginning of his Stotra also, in uh, Kulushekar Al uh, Pirumal, Kulushekar Alva, he also says that um, in the beginning of your prayers, he himself says that, listen to me, this is the conclusion. I have uh, nothing further to say to you, but just listen very carefully. So he says, two beautiful verses, he says, He loka shranuta prasuti marana vyades chikit sammimam He loka, hey people of this world, shranuta, please listen. I have the chikitsam, I have the medicine. Medicine for what? Prasuti, birth, marana, death. Vyadis, disease. Uh, birth, death, disease and old age, I have the medicine for this. Jai Shri Shri Radha Vrindan Bihari Bhagavan Ki Shriman Gauranga Mahaprabhu Ki Please listen, O people of this world, I have the medicine for birth, death, old age and disease. He says, Yoga Gnya Samudaharanti Muna Yoyam Yagya Valkyadaya You may ask me, what is your qualification of selling this medicine? Do you have MBBS? Do you have BAMS? What is BHMS? What is your conclusion? What is your uh, qualification? He says, no, no, no. This has been recommended by great doctors. Who are the great doctors of uh, material world to come out of material world? Yajna Valkya. Yajna Valkya, uh, Yoga Gya. They are expert. They have recommended this. So what you should do? Should, is this an ointment? Should you, ex uh, sometimes when you buy medicine, they say, na, only ex apply externally. Don't no, consume. So he says, this medicine, how this medicine? This medicine, internal medicine, he says. This we have to consume. Antar jodirame yamekam amritam. Inside, there's only one amrita. What is that? Krishna kyama piyatam. This Krishna, this holy name of Krishna. Drink that. Tat pitam. If you drink this medicine, paramaushadam. This is a paramaushadi. There's no other aushadam better than this. Tat pitam paramaushadam vitanute. Nirvana Matyantikam. This medicine will bestow you the highest bliss. So this is the medicine I am come. Hey people of this world, please listen. 
the next verse he says someone may not listen this i am not interested in medicines and then sometimes during corona time the doctors came and say please take this ayur ko please take this and then some of us think ah yaar sab bakwas i am not going to take it i am okay isn't it but we forgot our position that we are subjected to birth death old age and disease we forget that ah now i may be healthy but any time i can be subjected to this so the next verse kulashekar perumal is realizing people are not taking it seriously so again earlier he addressed them hey loka hey people of this world now he addresses them hey martya hey people who are going to die tu marne wale hai he martya paramam hitam shrunuta vo vakshami shankshepata hey people who are going to die the paramahita the best hit the best benediction the best welfare i am going to speak shrunuta please listen who oh, you are very impatient वक्षाम आई एम गोइंग टू स्पीक संक्षेप पता संक्षेप में मैं बताऊंगा आपको ठीक है ज्यादा टाइम नहीं लूंगा मैं दो मिनट में मैं बताऊंगा बिकॉज पीपल आर नॉट रेडी टू लिसन ना फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल दे डोंट थिंक दैट दिस प्रसूति मरणस व्यादिस इज गोइंग टू बी एप्लीकेबल टू मी सेकेंडली इवन इफ इट्स एप्लीकेबल दे थिंक दैट आई हैव नो टाइम सो शॉर्ट वाइल पीपल हु आर गोइंग टू डाई शॉर्ट वाइल आई एम गोइंग टू टेल यू हे मृत्या परम हितम श्रुणुता वो वक्षाम संक्षेपता संसारणावर्मी बहुल सम्यक प्रविशस्तिता ही सेज आई एम गोइंग टू गिव द सोल्यूशन वेरी शॉर्ट बट द डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ द प्रॉब्लम आई एम गोइंग टू टेल वेरी लॉन्ग वॉट इज द डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ द प्रॉब्लम दिस वर्ल्ड इज संसार अरणवम इट्स एन ओशन ऑफ सफरिंग फिल्ड विथ आपट ऊर्मी बहुलम फिल्ड विथ हैवी वेव्स दैट आर हिटिंग यू स्लैशिंग यू बीटिंग यू कॉन्स्टेंटली and samyak pravishta stita completely you have entered this and sitting down samyak completely pravishta entered stita sit down you have entered this samsara ocean and sat down in this ocean which is hitting you left right center with these waves this is your position he says like that nana gnanam apashya chetasi namo narayane tiyamum give up all kinds of other solutions nana gnanam आधा अलग दूसरा दूसरा ज्ञान छोड़ दो रिमूव दिस फ्रॉम योर हार्ट नाना ज्ञानम अपस्य चेतसी नमो नारायण एति अमुम टेक द होली नेम ऑफ नारायण मंत्रम स प्रणवम प्रणाम सहितम प्रावत्य दादम मुमुहु ही सेस टेक द होली नेम ऑफ द लॉर्ड विद द प्रणव विद द ओम चांट दिस मंत्र वेरी केयरफुली रेगुलेटली एंड ऑफर ओबेसेंसेस दैट इज ऑल that is all to come out of this material world so we are so fortunate every day we come we stay in the temple we come to the temple we chant the holy names we offer obeisances to the lord kulashekar alwar is saying this is the solution for people who are going to die all of us this is the paramahita take the holy names so seriously so with great um, conclusion he is saying this is the conclusion of the scriptures he says like that so here the four kumaras are also saying the same thing the goal of the shastras what shastra is recommending is to come out of this uh, material bodily conception and become attached to krishna so in a earlier verse before this yesterday speaker has mentioned how prithu maharaj has already this qualification uh, when the four kumaras appeared they told to prithu maharaj that what can we give you you have everything you have a natural tendency to glorify the lord you have a natural tendency to hear about the lord ye bahut durlabh hai this is very hard to find in this world you already have it so for one who is having everything what more can we give you you have everything so this world he is saying that the greatest uh, solution is to hear and glorify the supreme lord so we'll read some sections of this purport again this purport is we'll divide into two one shla prabhupada is saying about how we should give up this bodily contraction uh, conception second is how we should become attached to krishna so the purport begins like this proper rights everyone in human society is engaged for the ultimate benefit of life isn't it everyone is trying for progress isn't it everyone is trying for some benefit some progress some improvement some betterment everybody uh, today we have uh, rural development isn't it even the village wants to be improved we have urban development even the cities want to improve we have uh, human resource development in all companies everyone is trying to improve if you do a job you have kpi key performance index what you were last year what you are this year how are you improved isn't it everybody is about improving improving so proper says human society 
is meant to be engaged for the ultimate benefit. Not just any benefit, ultimate benefit. But persons who are in the bodily conception cannot achieve the ultimate goal, but they cannot, nor can they understand it. So someone who is very much in the uh, bodily conception of life, they cannot see what the ultimate benefit. Everyone wants benefit, everyone wants improvement. Everyone wants upgrade. But what is the best upgrade which requires no more upgrades? Isn't it? Any software also so much upgrades happen, so much new versions happen. Sometimes it's irritating, isn't it? Just give me one year. Why do you keep upgrading? After upgrade, they change the color. That's the only difference. Isn't it? So what is the greatest benefit of life? So here where we realize now how we are so fortunate, Shri Prabhupada has told us what is Shreyas and what is Prayas. So what is short-term benefit and what is long-term benefit? But to discern what is short-term and long-term, we need Shastra Gyan. We need guidance of Guru. Because even as devotees, sometimes we become confused. What is an immediate benefit and what is a long-term benefit? And sometimes we think that, um, you know, um, picking up some skills picking up some skills. It's a benefit. But it could be a short-term benefit because even skills are attached to the body. If body fails, where is your skills? So, there is no replacement for the ultimate benefit which is to get attachment to the holy name. Just a few days ago, one devotee was sharing with me Aindra Prabhu's lecture. Where he was saying, you know, that um, I think came out on YouTube also. Maybe you have heard. So, he was saying that the ultimate goal of life is to become attached to the holy name. If you're not attached to the holy name, but you do everything else, so what's the point? What did Shila Prabhupada come to give us? So we have this society, we have this institution, we have so many N number of services, wonderful. But the purpose of everything is to become attached to the holy name. That is the ultimate shreyas in our life. So persons who are stuck in bodily con conception, thinking oneself this body, can't achieve or understand this. Now we all know, we all experience, to come out of bodily conception is not so easy, isn't it? Years together we have been practicing, chanting, speaking, discussing. Yet to come out of this bodily conception of life is actually not easy. So some verses, you know, that Krishna says that in uh, Bhagavad Gita, that if we do not have Shastric understanding, we can never achieve the highest welfare. Shastra vidhim utsrija vartate kama karata nasa siddhim abhapnoti nasukam na param gatim. So the paramagati, if we want to get we have to follow some Shastric injunction. And Shastras again and again remind us that we are not this body. Vidura explains to Dhritarashtra the same thing, seeing the condition of Dhritarashtra so absorbed in material life, so absorbed in his bodily conception, thinking himself the king of the Kaurav dynasty, he says, Evam graheshu saktanam pramattanam tat ihaya Atyakramat abhijnata kala paramadushtara. For one who is so absorbed in this bodily conception, pramattanam tat ihaya. In this world, he is like a crazy person. Uh, pramattanam, mattana means intoxicated. Pramattanam is extremely intoxicated, crazy person. Uh, we have experienced a person who is intoxicated, says anything, does anything. Atyakramat abhijnata. He doesn't realize how time is. Atyakramat is actually um, Atikram. He's attacking him. You have a word, Atikram, Hindi? He's out attacking him. How time is actually attacking him. It doesn't avigyata. It is unknown. You cannot realize it. Uh, you, after so many years, and sometimes we also, no, we don't use so much big mirrors, but sometimes when you go to somewhere, some super mall or some, some uh, home, somebody's home, and you look yourself in the mirror, you actually realize, my God, you know, I kind of getting aged, isn't it? I don't know, isn't it? Sometimes. Or you see an old picture of yourself or someone takes a photo of you, you see yourself in the photo. Bah, pray Buddha ho gaya. Isn't it? So, time is such a thing. Param, uh, atyakramat, it's attacking us. We don't realize it. Avigyata kala paramadushtara. Very difficult to overcome. Rishabh Dev says the same thing to his sons in the fifth canto. Nunam pramatta kurute vikarma yadindraya pritaya apranoti so why to do why to become absorbed in bodily consciousness? Nunam Pramatta Kurute Vikarma. Person who is absorbed in bodily consciousness is crazy. They will do all nonsense things just to satisfy the senses. Nasadu I don't think this is a very good thing. Asan Apikleshada Asha Deha. What is the result of this? You just get more bodies. 
you just get more bodies one after another and all the bodies are anyways klesha klesha the bodies which can give you klesha only so bodily conception identification is very very hard to overcome it is ingrained so sometimes you know practical example when someone says to us oh you look very nice oh you speak very nice oh you sing very nice oh you are you your thought is very nice oh you manage very nice oh you handle things very nice you cook very nice this and that when they say to us and we think that ah uh, you know krishna's blessings guru's blessings but the fact is that is not me this is not who they are referring to if they say uh, you do things very nice this is a ability of the hands which are bestowed by indra which are bestowed by the lord this is ability of the hands it's not me if someone says you speak very nice this is the bestowing of brahma dev or you know intelligence of the mental intelligence faculty if someone says you sing very nice that's not me it's my voice box the sound is coming from the voice box isn't it if you get another body you the soul we get another body with a with a defunct what do you call that uh, not not functional voice box then will your voice be the same no so when someone appreciate us for something actually they are appreciating this body we are not us so therefore we have to keep reminding ourselves we are visitors in this world observers of this body audience of the happenings caretakers of the assets that's all we are we are simply visitors in this world so many things come and go we are just visiting right when you are a visitor you don't take things seriously uh, you pass a few comments for example if any one of us now goes to uh, we had one yatra na brahmachari yatra in hrishikesh so that's the only time i've gone to hrishikesh so anyone who has gone there one two times once even you pass a few comments acha tha aisa hona chahiye idhar hona chahiye but you don't take things seriously isn't it hey fix this fix that improve this build that you don't take things very seriously so we are visitors of this world observers in this body uh, we should have a understanding that no just like if someone wears a, a swimsuit or sub uh, what do you call that submerging what do you call it scuba diving scuba diving suit and he enters the ocean and he sees the fishes he sees the starfish he's just observing this knowing that it's because of this suit i'm observing things if someone wears a space suit and go to space he's observing the stars the movement of planets but he realize i'm just an observer so similarly we are situated in this body observing our surroundings we are simply audience of our happening so many things are happening around us we are simply audience we are simply observers of this we are simply caretakers of our assets so all of us have so many assets this body this family this society whatever but we are simply caretakers uh, today it's in my hand the asset will remain even if i'm not even if i don't have hands <laughs> it's in my hand today but even when i don't have hands the asset will remain so i'm simply just caretakers so this is why chanting hare krishna is so powerful because when chanting hare krishna we become uh, detached from the conception that you know i have anything to do with this uh, material world but we become established in the conception that i am a servant of krishna i am a servant of krishna and that is the position that i i desire and aspire for so chanting helps us to be established in our true self so this is the first part of the purport discussion by shila prabhupad where we should be detached from the body now next section prabhupad discusses how we should be attached to the supreme prabhupad continues the purport he says the ultimate goal of life is described in bhagavad gita 2.59 param drishtva nivartante higher taste uh, the de addiction shloka we sometimes say in social de addiction when one finds out the supreme goal of life prabhupad says he naturally becomes detached from the bodily concept very nice line when you find out the actual goal of life naturally you become a little detached from life isn't it all of us have this experience after coming to krishna consciousness hearing some little philosophy understanding a little atma tatva having a higher taste of mahaprasad we become a little detached from who we were before someone who had bad habits bad social circles or whatever we become a little detached from that condition prabhupada says here in this verse the indication is that one has to steadfastly increase attachment for the transcendence brahmani okay so by hearing some little philosophy living the lifestyle understanding we become a little detached but now the onus is on us to actually develop steadfast attachment for the supreme lord if not we become in a neutral position because of our practice we from negative we become zero but we don't want to remain zero we want to go into plus 
So to become plus, we have to increase our attachment in Krishna consciousness. So this is a good meditation. This world is like a dream. Uh, Shastras say all the time. Dream means basically it's like a cinema or a play or an act. Right? It's a temporary work of fiction. Uh, sometimes you become the hero, sometimes you become the villain. Isn't it? So we come into this world taking up different lives, different roles, so on and so forth. And what happens when we take up these different roles? Huh? So we try to enjoy this, right? We enjoy cinemas, music, dramas. Although it's temporary, we still enjoy it, isn't it? Some people buy, pay 500 rupees for a cinema ticket. I don't know how much the cost is. Or a musical. For a, a musical is a bit costly. Or an orchestra, right? I remember I was sharing that, um, well, previously in Malaysia, in our college days, we used to have like VIP passes to go into orchestra. So orchestra is a very professional band, you know, huge auditorium sitting, and or very, you have to wear suit, tie, shoes, very official. Once you enter, you can't come out. Sp stipulated time, no standing in between, no making noise, very professional setting, orchestra. So people pay a lot also, around uh, 1,700 rupees for one ticket, just for one hour, right? Used to go and sit inside, very professional orchestra music, music and all that. It's so temporary why people take pleasure in it. Because there is a pleasure, right? Nowadays, is it boy, children also, they play games, this uh, role-playing games, RPG games, PUBG, Free Fire, so temporary. Yet people still get some pleasure in it. Why? Because of attachment. So the thing with this body is it creates attachment. But you may say, Prabhu, whatever, even if it's temporary, there's attachment, but still there's pleasure. But temporary attachment causes pain. Temporary attachment causes misery. Temporary attachment is dissatisfying. This is a fact. Right? We don't deny the attachment, but being attached to temporary is very painful, isn't it? Today you get something, tomorrow you don't get something. Today you meet someone, you'll never meet the person ever again. So being attached to temporary is very painful. It's very miserable, actually. And it's very dissatisfying. It will not satisfy us. So therefore we agree that in this world, human body is there, attachment is there, but the point is, becoming attached to the temporary is very painful. So become attached to the eternal. Right. So the Sanat Kumaras have already given a solution, how to become attached to the eternal, by hearing and glorifying the name and fame of the Supreme Lord. In that way, we, we become attached. So this is the first tip. Uh, there are going to be three tips that are going to be discussed. The first tip of actually becoming attached to the Supreme Lord is increase affinity, increase liking of wanting to hear the name and fame of the Supreme Lord. Isn't it? It's not going to come so easy. And that Shila Prabhupada mentions in the purport. Next, Prabhupada continues. As confirmed in the Vedanta Sutra, Atato Brahma Jignasa, without inquiry of the Supreme, one cannot give up the attachment of the Supreme, this, this material world. By the evolutionary process of uh, 8,400,000 species, you cannot understand the ultimate goal of life. So, as an Eki, you know, Goom Firke, one day I'll become uh, liberated. Uh, some people tell us like that when you preach, you know, Prabhu, everything is distant. Time should come. Now it's not my time. Aapka time aayega. Aap karo. Aap karo bhakti. God will give me the time. So, it's not that by recycling, recycling, recycling in these uh, 8.4 lakh species, that one day, 80, sorry, 84 lakh species, that one day you will become a Siddha. It is not Kaal ke Anusar. It is not by the... So Prabhupada mentions, it's not like that. Unless you do not awaken inquiry, Jignasa, Jiva Tattva Jignasam, unless the Jignasa doesn't come, that detachment won't come. And if the detachment don't come, there's no getting out. So the main purpose of our preaching is to make people ask questions. The main purpose of our preaching is to stir people up, to make them a jignasu. Because if people don't think, they will not wake up. You see so many songs, no? Jeev Jago, Jeev Jago, you know, Gaura Chandra Bole, we sing Vibhavari Shesha, uh, morning left a little time only, Vibhavari Shesha, Aloka Pravesha, now uh, the darkness, uh, is little left only. Um, what is it? Vibhavari Shesha, Aloka Pravesha? Nidra chodi, utho jiva, abhi chhod do ya, sona, uthao. After you wake up, what do you do? Bolo hari hari. 
Mukunda Murari and then a holy names, all the holy names, the whole song is holy names only. Well, Krishna's different, Guna, Leela, isn't it? There's so many different pastimes of the Lord. He's, he's, he killed Kamsa, he did this, he did that, he did this, Yamuna, this, everything, so many pastimes. The whole bhajan in the morning is to wake up, right, and chant the holy names, that's it. So Thakur Bhakti Vinod says like that, right? Oh, please forgive me. So, Prabhupada continues, uh, that Atato Brahma Jigyasa means that in order to get out of the bodily conception, one has to increase attachment or inquiry about Brahman. So this constant thought process of thinking, uh, all of us overthink, isn't it? I also sometimes overthink. Jada sochte hai. Isn't it? Problem, na? people say, Ab jada sochte hai. So actually, what should we think about then? Sometimes we think about, okay, today, like uh, I have an unfortunate character of, you know, planning my day one night before. So I plan my entire day, every time, what am I going to do one day before? And if something comes in between, difficult. If someone suddenly comes and tells me that, uh, chalo, abhi, uh, sari no baje meeting, cannot. Mind rejects it totally. Because I already planned my day. So I, it, every day is like that for the, you know, last 36 years of my life. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Maybe <laughs> nahi But, so we have a tendency of thinking. Sometimes thinking too much. But then what we should think about then? We should think about how we should inquire into Brahman, the transcendence, Brahmani. We should think about the Lord. We should inquire about our current position. Think about the position of life. Atato Brahma, Jigyasa. That kind of Jigyasa we should do. Then he can be situated in transcendental devotional service. Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu. So the problem with today is, you know, we don't have inquiry and therefore we don't even think about getting out because we don't inquire. And therefore there is no increase in attachment of the Lord. So now the first solution, how to become attached to the Lord, we discussed. The Sanat Kumaras give by hearing the name and fame of the Lord, you can become attached to the Lord. Now Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he also gives a solution, second solution we're discussing. He says that if you want to move from Vahidi Sadhana Bhakti, that means very regulated, Right, you want to move into Raganuga, we become a little spontaneous. One needs laulium, one needs greed. And you can get this greed by two means by serving the deities and by hearing the pastimes of the Lord. So, same thing earlier, what Sanat Kumara says by chanting the name and the fame of the Lord, hearing and chanting, you become attached to the Lord. Here, Bhaktivinoda Thakur says by actually doing uh, service to the Lord, right, you can actually. Um, and hearing the pastimes of Radha and Krishna, you can actually become attached to the Lord. This is very natural. Now, if we think about it, we also do service. I just came out of the altar. <laughs> we also do service to the Lord. We also do service to the deities. Uh, we also hear the pastimes of the Lord. Janmashtami is coming. Krishna Katha will begin. Flow of nectar. So many we hear. But we are not developing that laulium. Isn't it? We are not developing that greed. So there's a difference here. And in part, um, the process cannot be mechanical. It has to be voluntary. See, all of us become devotees. There is a spirit of voluntary enthusiasm, voluntary spirit that has to be there. So somehow or other, our activities of devotional service, at least those who are in the temple, are institutionalized. Isn't it? Our deity worship is institutionalized. It's Friday. It's my day. Koi nahi to the person is say, hey, chalo na aarti karo. We will be like, hey, chara karna padega. So even our act of devotion is institutionalized. Our morning coming to Mangalarati is institutionalized. If not, thoda teen din se aaye ne, attendance karab dekhte hain, thoda aaja hoena. So we are still in that Vaidhi stage, although we are doing all this. So the mentality has to change. Although institution, that's why they say institution is a necessary evil. Because the, 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 the downside of an institution is that things become very mechanical and the voluntary spirit is killed in institution. Because everything is systemized. Right. But without an institution, there is no guiding force. We'll all become avaduts and no progress at all. So we should understand this, the need of the institution, at the same time how too much institutionalization also can actually affect us. We become mechanical in our performance. Right. Simple example, you, we come to sign the attendance. So the management doesn't want to be too much institutionalized. They won't catch you at every red P. But in our mind is institutionalized. We are afraid of the institution. So today I go, I see my attendance last three days, I fill up because I not I put blue P. P, 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 P. Who will see? 
isn't it? Who will catch? But I'm afraid. So the institution never catches, but our mind has become institutionalized. We are afraid. We are afraid of this. So we put PPPP, although I never come, but I put I present. Why? So who are we cheating? We are cheating ourselves, isn't it? Why to have that fear that someone is going to catch me wrong, someone is going to chastise me? What is there? So having this fear will make all our activities very mechanical. So then in spite of serving the deities, doing various service, it is all an institutional pressure. It is not an act of voluntary loving service. So then how we will develop laulium? So therefore sometimes they say, that you may stay in the temple, stay in the ashrama for 30 years. But it doesn't mean that you have developed spontaneous devotion. It doesn't mean that you have developed actual attraction for the Supreme Lord. Uh, it is not the fault of any institution or management. But our mindset has become institutionalized. Fear of administration. Fear of the management. That should come out. The natural voluntary spirit should come out. Now what is voluntary spirit? Voluntary spirit means when something is given to us, something is told to us, that utsahit, full, dil purvak, with full heart, yes, I own this service. This is my service. I want to do this service. Yes, this is something I want to do. Okay? And sometimes you may have desires, but it may not be sanctioned. That's a different thing. But when something is given to us at least, with full enthusiasm, we should do it. If we feel that, let me just do it and get it over with, then it's not, I mean, there's some benefit definitely. But this is not the kind of benefit that the Shastras are discussing. Shastras are discussing that attachment benefit. Where you actually feel that this is my service. So in that feeling you become attached. But at the same time, when the service changes, we become detached. So this is how this, living in this Dwanda, we have to have that kind of a understanding. So these are the two tips, hearing about the Lord and uh, always hearing and chanting the uh, holy name and fame of the Lord, which Sanat Kumara told. Bhaktivinoda Thakur says that by serving the deities and um, hearing the pastimes of Radha and Krishna, but particularly, you become attached. Now, Prabhupada extends this point. Someone may think serving the deities, oh my Lord, you know, sabko chance nahi mila. Isn't it? Very difficult what to do. So, Prabhupada extends this point of serving the deities. Prabhupada writes, he gives the next tip. He's continuing this purport. Prabhupada writes in his purport, to increase attachment for Brahman. This is not Brahma Jodi. This is this transcendence, Brahman. To increase attachment for the Supreme Lord means to engage in devotional service. Prabhupada stretches deity worship to general or all-encompassing devotional service. Jo koi bhi kar sakte. Everyone can do He stretches this point. Those who are attached to the impersonal form of Brahman cannot, retain, cannot remain attached for very long. He, now he draws a, a comparison. Doing service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead and just trying to serve to the impersonal form. Impersonalists, after rejecting this world as mitya or false, jagan mitya, come down again to this world, although they take sannyas to increase their attachment for Brahman. Similarly, many yogis who are attached to the localized aspect of Brahman or Paramatma, great sages like Vishwamitra, also fall down to victims of women. Therefore, increased attachment for the supreme personality of Godhead is advised in all shastras. So Prabhupada says one should become attached to the form of the Supreme Lord by rendering devotional service. So this is the third uh, point, how to become attached by rendering service. Now all of us render service. Uh, it may be a form of any kind of service. Um, shoe stall, seva. Now Janmashtami is coming, so my mind is also filled with what are all the various services and volunteers needed. <laughs> right? You have shoe, shoe stall, seva. You have um, you know, Abhishek juice making, seva. This seva, that seva. Now the consciousness of the sevak should be that this is deity worship. This is deity worship. This is the seva of Radha Vrindavan Bihari. Yeah. So sometimes, you know, now for years, preaching in the local area is uh, not very encouraging. <laughs> it's not very enthusiastic. But in my mind, at least one meditation I always have, which Sometimes people ask me, you know, what keeps you going? What, you know, going out every day? What is this? It's very tough actually. It's not at all very encouraging. But one meditation I always have is I keep thinking, why has Vrindavan Bihari come here? To the jungle. Isn't it? Why has he come here? Whose service has he come to take? Initial years we struggle to get people. Now all of us come from outside. None of us are locals. Uh, 
is it that to serve Vrindavan Bihari, people have to come from overseas, people have to come from other states, people have to come from the cities. So who has Vrindavan Bihari here come here for? He has come to take the service of the locals. Isn't it? Radha Krishna is everywhere. Radha Krishna is there in Bivandi also, Radha Madhav. Isn't it? So he has come to take the service of the locals. Oh, so now it's our duty then to spread their fame and name so that people become attached to them so that people can serve them. He is coming here waiting. Who will come to serve me? So it's then our duty now to just to awaken that jignyasa and connect people. Bhagavan, aap ke liye hai. So they have to do the service. How long will we do service, isn't it? So Prabhupada extends this point of devotional service. So therefore, we have to see all services as glorifying their lordships. All services as for the pleasure of the Supreme Lord. Now for this, we need a guru. Else there could be some mistaken understanding. Uh, in early days, people t took a wrong understanding in ISKCON. There was always this uh, issue with uh, grahastas and uh, brahmacharis. They say that, no, grahasta is maya, what service they are doing. And brahmacharis are doing the rail service. Sannyasis are doing rail service. Uh, very famous examples for book distributors. They will not interest in family life. Uh, those who get, uh, who are, you know, mothers, caring mothers, they'll say, dumb the load and hit the road. That kind of things they'll say, you know. And book distribution battles, someone puncturing the other devotees' vehicles. So all this is very immature in a service. Now when you're owning a service, this is not the kind of mood that we should have. All services we should see as glorifying the Supreme Lord. Ultimately, Lord has given us some swabhav. Lord has given us some ability. Uh, some Lord have given us some capacity also. Not everyone has the same capacity. So whatever capacity Lord has given us, we should think that this is what I should use to the glorification of the Lord's service. I cannot compare with others. Everybody is unique. Shashla Prabhupada continues the purport. He says that the only way of detachment from material existence is explained in Bhagavad Gita 2.59. Again he says, Param Drishtva Nivartante. So two times he quotes the same verse in the purport. The only means of detachment is to get a higher taste. Uh, this is the famous de-addiction sloka. If you want to come out of uh, any material addictions, get a higher taste. So Prabhupada continues, one can cease material activities when he actually has a taste for devotional service. Now taste is not something that is going to come mechanically. Like Prabhupada mentioned, na, just by taking birth in eight, 84 lakh species, cycling, cycling, you won't become a Siddha. So similarly, just by very mechanically doing things, we won't get taste. One has to have some bhavana behind it. One has to have some mood and purpose behind it. Some intention behind it. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also recommended love of God as the ultimate goal of life. Prema Pumarto Mahan. Okay? So Prabhupada says that there be many goals in life, but for a devotee, this is the only goal. We are working hard, we are endeavoring to develop taste and attachment to the Supreme Lord only for one thing, to develop love. Without increasing love of Godhead, one cannot achieve the perfectional stage of transcendental position. Therefore, this is the only way, there is no other means that we have to work for it. So, we can see very uh, exemplary um, examples in Chaitanya Charitamrit of how devotees of or disciples of Lord Chaitanya, they exemplify this of having taste, engaging in devotional service, even when they are in separation from the Lord, phys uh, difference of physical proximity. Yesterday was the disappearance of Lokanath Goswami. So, we heard the story he is one of the first Vaishnavas to be in Vrindavan. And practically after that, he didn't have much darshan, but we were only once of Mahaprabhu. After that, nothing. Uh, we heard the story of uh, the uh, Tapan Mishra. When he met Mahaprabhu in Bengal, he was told to go to Varanasi, where there was not a Vaishnav city. That one instruction, that's it. He lived long with his life like that. Right? So, so many disciples of Lord Chaitanya, even the six Goswamis themselves, very few meetings with the Lord. And after that, that's it. Our own Srila Prabhupada, uh, okay, Mahaprabhu was physically manifested and doing his leelas for 48 years. 24 years in Navadvip, 24 years in Puri. So with that, the devotees, when they had separation from Mahaprabhu, they felt it was a very short time. For only 48 years, isn't it? Sometimes we also think only 48 years. Some of us are probably nearing 48 years old. Isn't it? Only 48 years old bus. But our Srila Prabhupada was with us, Iskon, for only 12 years. One fourth. One fourth of the activities, only 12 years. And things are such a short time. So the disciples of Shala Prabhupada could not appreciate or could not feel 
Srila Prabhupada's presence when he was there. But when he disappeared, when Prabhupada left, then people start thinking, my God, what Prabhupada has given us. Now without Prabhupada, how will we continue? In the book by Yamuna Mati, she writes, uh, so ISKCON has three periods. The early periods, where the boom of ISKCON is, and the second period, where ISKCON spread over the rest of the world, especially in India, the Indian period. And the last period was Prabhupada when he was leaving, and all the disciples are struggling, you know, and uh, so many struggles came in ISKCON towards the end also. So Yamuna Mataji was there in the initial period, and she was there only for the half period of the middle age, the middle period of ISKCON. She had some issues came up in, New, in Vrindavan during the construction, and then Yamuna Mataji, who was very close to Prabhupada, left. She went back to US and she continued there. Separate, kind of like, uh, you know, not so much in the limelight. If you see the middle age history of ISKCON and the end age of history of ISKCON, not, nothing much is mentioned about her, except Govinda Madhi Purusham. Isn't it? Nothing much is mentioned about her. So she writes, or she mentions in that book, that somehow or other, because she was, she was not physically present anymore in the association of Prabhupada at that time, when Prabhupada left, she could hold herself together. She said that if I was with Prabhupada at the time that he left, I don't think I could have hold myself together because I had practiced serving in separation. Prabhupada had allowed me, Krishna had allowed me to practice serving in separation even while Prabhupada was physically manifest. So therefore when Prabhupada was not physically manifest, I could continue my service. So she was grateful for that period. It's very amazing. So like that, all the followers of Lord Chaitanya and the parampara and all of us coming in the line of, Gaudiya, of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, actually this is there, serving in separation. So at every moment, you know, we won't have the all great facility to serve with the spiritual master, to serve with all the exalted Vaishnavas, so many great devotees, so many Prabhupada disciples, we won't have that. So our whole lives, at least, you know, from initial years only, we are serving in separation. Right? We are always serving in separation. So therefore, we can get inspiration from the Sampradaya Acharyas, how they will always remain in separation, but still having a taste. Sometimes we feel that I'm not getting a taste. I need direct service. Direct service may not always be there. But here, just by rendering devotional service, just by hearing and chanting the name and the fame of the Lord, just by engaging in uh, deity worship and uh, other forms of devotional service, knowing that it's deity worship also, and just by hearing the pastimes of Radha and Krishna, one can actually develop a attachment for the Supreme Lord. So, jignasa to develop detachment and actually consciously rendering service to develop attachment to the Supreme Lord. So, these are the beautiful instructions of the four Kumaras. I don't think to Prithu Maharaj because he has everything. These four Kumaras instructions are to us only because uh, Prithu Maharaj has everything already. There's nothing to instruct him in. So, we'd like to end here. Thank you very much for your kind attention and patient hearing. Jai Grantra Srimad Bhagavadam ki, Shla Prabhupada ki, Hare Krishna.